So um, I won't repeat all of this because Leon did it, but once again, uh, impossible to thank Eileen Kramer too much. Uh, John Luff for the demo room, the board, the committee, the staff, the moderators. The moderators all have a hard time corralling their panels. Uh, Charles Poynton for his seminar, the ATSC yesterday. Mark your calendars next year here at the Hayek Brand Champions once again, the week of February 18th through 22nd. The actual retreat will start on the 20th. Uh, you can submit proposals for the main program as soon as you'd like. There's my email address, and um, the deadline will be sometime in October. Decisions will be late November, as usual. I respond to every submission. If you did not get a response, I probably didn't get your submission. The basics. Once again, as Leon said, the schedule rules. It's Verizon wireless time, which is basically um, National Naval Observatory time. Uh, power is available in all the rows. There's Wi-Fi in the room. The SSID is HPA. The password is Hollywood 2012. The demo rooms, and notice there are two, are open until 7.30 p.m. today. They will be open tomorrow from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. There are no demos Friday, so be sure you see your demos before that. Uh, the main demo room is in Indian Wells Ballroom Mesquite. You go out the door, turn right. It's the very next door to go in. The next room is Indian Wells Ballroom Nopales. It's a dark room because there's dark things or things that need dark rooms being demoed in there. Lunch today will be on the terrace and lawn right off the foyer behind us. Uh, breakfast roundtables are in the Desert Vista Ballroom. If you weren't there this morning, it's uh, down around that side. Uh, the topic lists are posted at the door. Slots are still available. If you would like a breakfast roundtable and you haven't signed up for one to moderate one tomorrow or Thursday, just let me know. I sit at the end of that first row. If you get it to me by the end of the last session, you will have a roundtable tomorrow. And tomorrow morning, slight difference. We're going to start in here at 8.45 or 8.43 for my announcements. Um, we're having a bi-coastal event about digital commercial slates. I'm not entirely sure myself what this is, but it's involving the Association of National Advertisers, and that's the first time ANA has been involved in a tech retreat, so could be interesting. Uh, the quizzes. Everybody except me is eligible. The hotel staff is eligible. HPA staff is eligible. Any research you would like to do is okay. Feel free to Google anything you want, use encyclopedias, call old timers, place the entries in the bowl by the end of the session. Uh, quiz number five, you have to do it by the last refreshment break on Friday. Have your name and the quiz number on it. There is no penalty for wrong answers, so feel free to enter as many times as you want. Currently open is quiz number one. What key technology of our industry was publicly introduced at the 1876 Philadelphia Centennial Exposition World's Fair. Uh, things, other things that were introduced at that World's Fair included Heinz ketchup, um, the arm and torch of the Statue of Liberty, and what uh, Ken Honold reminded me could be called high-res root beer. Uh, quiz number five is also open, and additional hints are being added each session for that. The basic question is, asked what he might introduce there, which means it was a press conference, Thomas Edison seemingly predicted he would demonstrate what HPA-related technology at which World's Fair. And the first hint has been added to this one already. It's that a Canadian professor um, said that he independently and perhaps even in advance had come up with this technology himself, and he called it the Stanlon, S-T-A-N-L-O-N. The prize will be a Panasonic DMP BDT 110 3D networked Blu-ray player with all the widgets that you could possibly want, and it's courtesy of Pete Putman at Rome Consulting. The first quiz, yesterday's, was quiz zero, what technology of our industry was inspired by Expo 67 in Montreal, and the answer is IMAX. And this is taken directly from the IMAX website, saying that they were, in fact, inspired by all the multi-screen stuff that was done at Expo 67, which also, by the way, inspired Norman Jewison's uh, Thomas Crown Affair in 1968. And there's some multi-screen stuff that he did in that. The winner was David Reisner, who got it right away. 
Basics part three, speakers. Um, if you are willing to post your presentations, then either send or give them to Eileen or Max. Max is at the computer at the desk outside for posting. All of my presentations are already up on the site, including the one I did for ATSC yesterday. Uh, no recording, please, except for your personal use. If you want to record things so you can listen to it later, that's fine. Please don't distribute it. Door prizes on Friday afternoon, be there. And these were all arranged by Pete Putman of uh, Rome Consulting again, a Channel Master DTV converter, Epson Multimedia Viewer, LG cell phones and DTV DVD combos, Kramer cables and distribution amplifier, a Monster HD calibration DVD, on-air solutions PC DVD receiver, Voodoo receiver with Wi-Fi, and Xbox Connect with Dance Central 2. The basics, be nice. Um, mute your computer sounds, put your communications devices on vibrate. If a call comes in, if you need to make a call or something, that's fine. I don't want to hear anything in the room other than hang on while I go outside. That's it. All conversations, all calls outside. The back of the room is not outside. Outside is outside. The Wi-Fi again, the SSID is HPA. The password is Hollywood2012. Please fill out evaluations. There will be links at the registration table for you. Uh, do it for both the sessions and the demos. The link to the presentations is uh, hpaonline.com slash page slash 2012 space or underscore tr underscore presentations. But much easier way, go to the HPA website, go to the program page, uh, just change the number in that URL to 131455. So again, go to the program page, change the number to 131455. You will find my presentations up there already. Anybody who has submitted a presentation is up there. Okay, quick technology year in review. This is the 26th or 77th annual This is the Year of HDTV. Um, Lightman now says there's 69% of U.S. households with HD, Nielsen is approximately the same number. Uh, both Lightman and Nielsen also say about a third, maybe a little more, have two or more HD TVs already. Uh, Nielsen in the first quarter of last year said that the public perceives there are 75 HD channels that they can tune into. Uh, so I think I might start dropping the this is the year of HD TV from future presentations, except there are still not HD TV press bridges. When there's an event, what the news media plug into is analog NTSC with mono sound in 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Amazing. This is the third or 84th annual This is the Year of 3D TV. Uh, five of the top 10 2011 movies were in 3D, but six of the top 10 in 2010 were in 3D. And U.S. movie box office continues to decline in both uh, money and audience. Just looking at audience, in 2011, uh, 1.3 billion admissions sold. That's the lowest since 1995. Uh, why do I put this in the section with 3D? By the way, the population increased by 19% in the same period. Uh, I put this in the section of 3D because the only reason the numbers aren't worse is because of the 3D premium that's being charged. And as long as exhibitors can continue to charge that premium and as long as people are still willing to go to 3D movies, that seems to be what's driving box office. But here's a little something from uh, last week, Consumer Electronics Daily. Adult entertainment industry awaits glasses-free 3D. Uh, most of the distributors of porn don't want to distribute 3D until we get autostereoscopic displays, apparently. Okay, I'm going to show a whole bunch of stuff here from Nielsen. On each one, I've put in a link. Um, you can download the reports for free. You just have to give them your name and your email address, very little, uh, and they don't bother you. So this is from their uh, mobile, state of the mobile report, and it shows that there's ever-increasing numbers of mobile viewers, and um, they are watching ever-increasing amounts of mobile video. Here's one saying that there's tremendous numbers of streams, more women uh, watch video on social networks, but men watch longer. Um, here's TV viewing, 
Uh, again, it has increased. It is higher than it's ever been. But there's been a decline in three demographic areas. The three groups between 12 years old and 34 years old actually went down a little bit. Um, here's watching TV in the home. Um, you can see at the right top there that the uh, number of people watching TV in the home actually went down a little tiny bit, although people watching time-shifted TV went up and so on. Uh, and people using Internet on a computer went down. I guess that's because so many people are doing their email on their smartphones now. Here are cross-platform homes and analysis. Um, the top one is people who are in the top quintile, the top 20% of people who stream, and uh, obviously they have the most minutes of streaming per day, 21.1 minutes, and they have the least minutes of watching TV, 222.7. They still watch 10 times more TV than they stream, more than 10 times. The top uh, internet quintile, uh, obviously the most internet minutes online, 83.6, but they also watch more TV than the average TV viewer. Uh, the top television quintile, Astounding, 611.7 minutes of TV a day. They watch more than 10 hours of TV per day. Uh, not so much internet, not so much streaming. And then right under that, that all, that's for all households. And you can see the average number for the various things. Uh, down at the bottom there, various TV distribution sources. Obviously, there's been some adjustments. Broadcast has gone up. Cable has gone down. Telco and satellite have gone up a little bit. Um, this has too much information for you to absorb, but just in the top left, all of this is online, though, so you can get it from my presentation and from Nielsen. Um, the, uh, just to the right of the blue stuff at the top left, just showing again that lots of mobile phone use, lots of online use, and so on. And if we look at what people were watching in mobile video, number one is YouTube. Well, if we discount that, then we have Fox, ABC, Con Comedy Central and CBS, so it's TV type stuff. But what happens if we add all of the mobile and internet video? Well, 35 uh, minutes and 8 seconds, uh, sorry, 35 hours and 8 minutes is how much TV people watch. If we add mobile and streaming, it goes up to 35 hours and 42 minutes per week. So, Adding all of that mobile viewing and all of that internet viewing is not really changing the number a lot. TV is still what most people watch. Uh, the top three audience in order, Super Bowl 12, Super Bowl 11, Super Bowl 10. Number four was the last episode of MASH. Now here's interesting, on the left side, this is a breakdown of time spent using Android devices, like their mobile phones. And the little tiny blue thing down near the bottom is combined music and video. It's 2% of the time. Well, yeah, people aren't watching TV on their phones. The thing on the right here I kind of find interesting. It's um, programming and commercials. Programming is the blue, commercials is the white. And how many people use their um, tablets while watching one of those things, and invariably, people use the tablets more during the programs than the commercials. Now, maybe that means they went to the bathroom or the kitchen during the commercials, but I'm not sure. Household penetration from uh, CEA, TV peaked last year or two years ago. It's now 96%, down from 99%. Radio is holding steady at 98%. Um, going down this list, I won't go through everything again. It's available to you, but there's still an awful lot of analog out there. Uh, a lot of people are using analog TVs. So, technology, acquisition. We will discuss 4K in the next panel. Uh, improved imagers and processing. Sony's new HDC 2500, just amazing. It's a two-thirds inch prism CCD camera. Same kind of thing we've been using for years. But depending on how you measure, one to two stops quieter or more sensitive than the previous camera. It's just astounding. I've played with this thing. Unbelievable. Larger format, Ikigami has joined the four-thirds inch size. High dynamic range, we'll hear more about this from Charles Poynton this morning. Uh, there's Red's HDRX. The picture at the right there is Red's booth at NAB. You don't see any camera there because there wasn't a camera. There was a tattoo artist who was tattooing women. 
And then DSC has a chart now to try to show you 21 stops of dynamic range. Storage. Panasonic had a press conference. They made a big announcement that the London Olympics uh, official host broadcaster is getting equipment from them. So what astounding new technology did they announce for the next Olympic Games this year? And it is DVC Pro HD. <laughs> it's tape-based, it's subsampled, and it was introduced in 1999. Remember uncompressed HD? This is an old D6 machine, uh, about the size of a washer-dryer combination, maybe heavier, certainly more expensive, louder, yeah. Um, here is what we have now from Blackmagic. The Hyperdeck shuttle is the thing at the top right, $345 to record uncompressed HD. And that's the whole thing in his hand. That's a... Uh, memory being shoved into it. You want a studio version complete with display and time code, $995, and you can swap drives. It's the bitrate reduction processing now that costs money. The recording is fairly easy. Processing. Again, Blackmagic Design, this ATEM uh, television studio, that's an HD switcher, production switcher, for $995, complete with mix effects and uh, all kinds of other stuff. On the right, the picture at the bottom is the original. The picture at the top is the processed one. This is Topaz Labs in focus. So we are maybe approaching that point that we saw on television 20 years ago where the police detective comes in and says, blow it up and make it sharper. Uh, auto stereoscopic display. This is Domenko's 52 inch, which is shown at the Triaxis booth at NAB. It has 28 views, so fairly good uh, 3D viewing angle, but if you have 28 views, it means you're dividing the resolution by 28. So I've simulated the resolution after 28 view division. But there are some interesting things going on in um, stereoscopic display. Here's Fraunhofer's HHI. Um, free to see display and the thing at the top is a camera that does eye tracking of the viewer. So if you move your head around, it follows you. You need only two views and it will still give you good view. You may have seen this in Mission Impossible when the movie came out. Uh, the, in the Kremlin scene, they make the fake hallway and they're showing a view to the guard, but then it screws up because multiple guards show up and the system doesn't know whose eyes to track. The muted system, which the logo is down there, is uh, a system that um, allows eye tracking of multiple viewers. I think they can do eight or ten viewers at once, and they can all be moving around a room, and they can all be watching 3D, and you still have only two views. They have multiple light sources that are moving around to deal with the multiple viewers. I uh, highly recommend that. I will change what's online so you will get that slide. So um, get out there and learn one for the Gipper. And enjoy the 2012 technology retreat. And yes, I will look different at NAB. Every year everyone says, oh, you look so different. Every year I have my annual haircut, whether I need it or not, in March before <laughs> NAB. Uh, so thank you very much. And if I can get the camera panel to come up now.